Hello, this is just a short video about how I'm going to install one of these diesel night heaters into my uh, Talbot Express Camelot uh, motorhome. Um, it's the same as the Fiat Carto and the Citroen C something as well. Um, so, I've all, following some advice from the Talbot Owners Club, to whom I am very much indebted, I have purchased one of these diesel heaters from eBay. A slightly amazingly unbelievable 70 quid for all this stuff which includes the tank the controller the heater itself looks like pretty much all the necessary connectors and things like that the air ducts uh, silencer uh, wiring harness I mean I know it's um, the end of springtime so perhaps they're on a bit of a cheap offer but that's slightly amazing for 70 quid if it works um, so, first thing I'm going to do is um, I've found that these uh, ducts, that's a 75mm diameter and I don't have a 75mm hole saw, so I've contacted a mate to see if I can borrow one of those. These are, uh, that one's 25, that one's about 23. I've got a 1 inch hole saw, so I'll be able to cut that alright and cut a little one for the fuel inlet there. I'm um, going to have a read of the manual and then start to think about installing this in my Talbot Express. Okay so these holes seem to be a 7mm which makes sense because these studs that are going to come through are M6 so it's a bit of clearance there. Um, around the outside I think that's what they've given me these screws for self tappers. Perhaps they didn't, um, that's meant more for a um, car rather than for a camper van with a plywood floor. I'm slightly concerned that these studs aren't actually that long and that by the time they've got to go through the rubber gasket, the metal plate, the lino, the half inch thick plywood floor underneath that and then the metal and the, particularly the corrugated on the other side I'm a little concerned whether they're going to be long enough or not uh, but anyway I'm going to give it a try. So what I'm going to do is bolt the mounting plate down first, one, two, three, four, before I drill one, two, three, four, five, seven millis, because that should then hold it really in a good place while I'm doing that drilling so it doesn't shuffle about. And then once all they're in, I'll have a go with a hole saw at these two. Gonna have to be quite accurate with that because there's not much tolerance on it. Okay, so I've been getting a bit carried away with the hole saw. So I've drilled one outlet here sort of making use of the lower down bit so that the cover doesn't have to uh, be too high up in there and then I've drilled another one on that side heading out into the corridor a bit more if you can call it a corridor I'm not quite so pleased with the way that one worked out but hey it's there so now I'm looking at positioning the actual unit itself uh, I've found that underneath the van there's quite a strong bulkhead about there and then there's another strong bulkhead about there but I think that's okay because that, this plate um, which is what I'm going to use for all my marking out and I will eventually bolt the unit to um, sort of suggests that's going to be alright that holes there will avoid the bulkheads um, also I brought it in a bit from the side because it's like a bit corrugated underneath the bottom I wonder if I can show you that I don't know if you'll be able to see anything under here. Probably not. But it's a bit corrugated underneath. So I thought I'd rather go through the middle of the corrugation rather than get caught on the end of it. I doubt if you can see anything there at all. So. Ooh. But anyway, that's given me a position for the mounting plate. And that means the unit will end up. Obviously it's upside down at the moment but something like that. So that gives me enough clearance to get air in here and I'll probably drill a vent hole, air inlet hole about there actually. Uh, drill an air in hole up about there and maybe another one about here, something like that. So that's fresh air to circulate into the van. But it gives me a bit more space for getting things like these in. And there's a couple of, there's gonna be a couple of curves. So a curve to get there and a curve to get there. So I think having the unit more towards the back but leaving enough vent space gives me more space for getting my hoses in. So that's what I'm planning about. 
Uh, okay, confession time. It's actually taken me about three goes to get this plate in the right place, both left and right, so that these screws didn't disappear into the bulkhead gun running that way, um, and to get it right forward and back. So it's not just about getting these right. I got these four so I could see them coming through the other side. It turned out quite handy doing these first because it's just a tiny little hole. I drilled these about two and a half milli, something like that. But then once you've done those, you can see where it comes through on the other side so that you're sure when you come to drilling these bigger holes that they'll be in the place where you want them to be uh, underneath the van. Okay, so what I've done here uh, to get fresh air inlet from the van into the uh, cold side of the heater. So I've drilled a 60 mil hole there through that one. Uh, that's a tricky one because that's double thickness and also the cold water pipes are behind there so you don't want to just drill straight through and drill your water pipes. I put a sheet of metal behind there to make sure I didn't break them. Another one there going up to the uh, towards the sliding door. I've got these um, vent things. They they fit over a 60 mil so that's why I chose 60 mil for that job. And then because that one goes into the bottom of the cupboard, now there's not so much clearance at the bottom of the cupboard, so I've drilled two 35 mil holes in the bottom of this cupboard here. So hopefully that will give sufficient uh, air to come back in. Okay, well I've been doing a bit of thinking. Uh, the manual that comes with this unit. There is a manual but it's mainly all the health and safety stuff which is important. It doesn't really tell you how to install it. Um, I've actually, there's not as much room in this box as I thought uh, because the um, hoses are so chunky that uh, they, you actually need quite a bit of room for them but I'm hoping I can get this to fit with that uh, T-shaped hose on a bit of an angle going up to that one vent and then the branch coming down to this one. I've drilled that actually too close to the bulkhead. I've not left myself any room to get the hose and the Jubilee clip in but I'm hoping I'll get away with it. I think that hose will expand to come and fit the gap so I'm going to have two hopefully small angle bits, one there, one there with that on an angle to carry the heat that way and then that will bring it this way. Um, I've been slightly puzzled by this, hang on, let's zoom in a bit, this slot in the plate and I've realised I think that is for the um, electrical power for the pump to go through. Once that gasket is on there, you won't see the line, you'll just see the hole and I think that is to allow me to thread where have you gone? I'm hoping that might let me thread that rather large connector through that hole, maybe, and then slide it along there, put that on, and that lets me get the power through to the um, fuel pump without having to make another hole in another big hole in the floor to get the connector through. I mean, I could snip the wires and resolder them, but. Seems a shame, doesn't it, when it's such a nice thing. It's quite a long lead on that, don't really know why. And then with the other power connectors, I has come down to this one uh, harness. So I'm thinking if I drill a hole through the bulkhead, maybe about here, that's big enough to take the big multi-connector, then I can run all the wires inside these cupboards and then they're out of the way um, and it should be neat. I'll have to drill a fair size hole in this bulkhead but then it's got like a mounting place. I wonder if I can sort of drill it, thread the thing through and then slot it down and glue that in, fix that in place. Anyway, we'll see. So that's my vague plan at the moment to um, get everything in. And my hope is that because I've got stuff around the edges, whether I can find a way of still making use of the full depth for this part and then I'll put a, a shelf on top to protect the unit and um, I'll still have all this remaining depth so I haven't lost too much storage. Uh, 
Uh, just a couple of quick little things about wiring up. So what I did, uh, I drilled a hole in the bulkhead and pushed the main multi-pin connector that's going to connect to the uh, heater itself through. So that's got an uh, earth connection on it, uh, that black one. So I just put it to a little ring. The slightly weird thing is that the screws that, that come with the unit, they've got a plastic washer instead of a metal washer. So I just made sure that I put the, um, the circle part of the electrical connector between the washer and the head, just to make sure it actually did get electrical contract, contact, so that's one. Um, the red wire uh, live feed, so I've just fed that from up here in the camper van. Um, probably need a bit more light on. Hold on. So um, in my van, there's by the side of the sink drainer, there's this funny little socket. Um, and so what I did, but it's actually got a really decent supply, a really good thick cable. I doubt if you'll be able to see anything. Oh, well, maybe you can. There's a really decent thick cable coming from the Zig. So I've gone into there because I think it should give me plenty of uh, control. It's got a fuse there and then I've run that down. Uh, slight advantage of the camper van is all these different cupboards and things. They've all got like... Um, uh, water pipes or drainage pipes or something so it's quite easy to follow them through um, and they bring you they get you back to the um, uh, seat base so this one I've put here and the way I did that was I drilled a hole big enough for the plug in the wood there and then I threaded the plug through from that side from this side to that side and then I fastened the mounting plate and but I slid the mounting plate down to cover the hole so actually I'm quite pleased with that that's quite neat you don't see any wires anywhere and it drops into the back and it can follow the hoses for the um, hot and cold water downwards and then um, that comes out to here and then the last one on the wind on the wiring is just the one that I mentioned um, that goes through to the pump so I did manage to get that connector to fit through there just it was difficult I had to trim a little bit off a corner actually and then once that gasket's on that'll be uh, that one going out of there so that's all the wires um, not too bad and it's helpful having the cupboards to be able to route everything through the drilling template plate was really useful to ensure that I could drill the holes for um, the pipes uh, and everything and the studs in the floor in the right place. Um, I'd hoped at first that I'd be able to bolt the whole thing just through the actual camper floor here but unfortunately with uh, a millimetre of liner and six millimetre of plywood um, and then with this being corrugated so that drops down there about 10 millimeter it meant coming from here I lost about 25 millimeter on my studs and pipes so there was no way that was going to work so I had to cut the wooden floor and the lino out to let me see the actual metal floor of the camper van itself um, and then to cope with the up and down I've had to modify the um, fixing plate a bit so that it actually sits down into that gap so it's been a bit of a faff um, and I probably have to re-drill some of these holes that hold that in place might get away with it um, but that means that it's just a thin sandwich now so there should be plenty of um, both the pipes and the studs going through so that I can uh, bolt the thing down properly. Okay, <clears throat> so here's the hot box in place with its uh, vents as well. So it comes, what it comes out. Uh, I need to get a couple more Jubilee coats, but it can either go straight through to that vent there, or it can come out of this one and go into the um, corridor bit here. 
and um, so what I've done, I've boxed it in um, and here's a lid that goes on the top so that actually <coughs> I've really lost hardly any storage in there which I'm quite pleased about um, I've sort of deliberately left a few uh, holes and things around to let ventilation get in I'm just making this a lift off cover so <coughs> I don't know that you will need to get to it for moments but if I did then that's quite available okay we are now underneath the camper van as you could probably guess and I just want to show you how I connected everything up uh, so this one here is the exhaust outlet so I've jubilee clipped that on that comes down and that heads off through the silencer towards the back of the camper van so exhaust gas is going behind uh, this one here is the fresh air inlet to combustion so because I don't want to get any mix up between the two I've actually taken that one forward and it goes under here and the silencer thing is here under the bulkhead just by the sliding side door so that's that one right this thin black one is that electrical one which powers the pump and this green one is obviously the uh, diesel fuel hose it's going to be what I've done with those two is I've taken them inboard away from those two I just talked about and conveniently there is a brake pipe which runs uh, in just the right place so I've been um, tie wrapping the uh, fuel hose and the electrical power for the pump to this brake hose really good anchoring point and it's away from anything dangerous okay I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this but I'm underneath the van now so these are the two it's the electrical uh, and the fuel coming from the unit and following this um, brake pipe that I talked about um, and they go down here uh, and further on Oof, can I get you a bit nearer hold on uh, it follows on and then uh, can't get to that well I'll just do my best and then the fuel pump uh, for some reason that I can't quite understand has to be at an angle of 30 degrees so that's fastened there um, and then in that two the fuel pump is going down there right on fuel pump going down there and it's going underneath that bulkhead and then from there it goes up into the van again so hoping that you can see the fuel pump there okay last section now so uh, I was a little bit disappointed this is the tank that the unit comes with and it was just too tall to fit in that space in the locker behind the wheel arch that um, I showed you before um, funnily enough it's width if you can turn it that way it would fit in but then there's not much point with the filler there so what I did turn that leg out so um, I bought a slightly smaller and more squat tank that fella there it's only five litres that's the drawback uh, but I sat that there and that fillers up near the top so that when this one's on you could still fill it um, but what I discovered was even with that there's still quite a bit of space underneath so I sat it on the folding shelf and there's actually room there to get a jerry can might be a good place to store it and it does mean all your flammable stuff is actually inside this flammable locker one thing to watch out is this hose coming out of the back kinking uh, that happened to me um, bleeding the system uh, was quite difficult and took quite a lot of time um, and then the other thing I found was that the live feed that I put in uh, out of this socket fed from the zig the zig actually couldn't manage it, it couldn't keep up with it so it kept tripping out which was not good so in the end I just ran a direct live from the leisure battery 
and again I followed that brake pipe um, from the front to the back and it brought me out of the right place underneath here where the unit is but I've got to say now oh the advantage of that slightly is that the um, the programmer unit remembers the time it doesn't forget the time every time you switch the zig off at night so it must have a reasonable current draw though if the zig was struggling to use it um, and so the result is I'm just really pleased with it um, it all works fine uh, plenty of heat um, there's a bit of clicking comes from the back of the van where that um, pump is underneath but it's not too bad and um, let me just show you, show you outside and so we've got the oh. yeah it's the silencer and everything but it doesn't get too hot uh, down there um, yeah and the live feed is coming from the front so I'm really pleased. It's easy to use. Uh, I think I'm going to actually turn the heat down a bit on it because if anything is a bit too warm. Uh, it's quite quiet in operation. Um, really good value and yeah it was a bit of a challenge to fit but I quite enjoyed it.